A crime family is thrown into turmoil when a prodigal son returns on today's Miami Vice. God's work was directed by Jan Eliasberg and was written by Edward Tivnan, who also helped develop ABC's 2020. This is Tivnan's sole Miami Vice credit, and it's an unusually weighty and thoughtful episode. At the waterfront, Tubbs meets with Francesco Cruz, the oldest son of the notorious Cruz crime family, to discuss the purchase of stolen electronics. Francesco is played by Platoon's Francesco Quinn, son of legendary actor Anthony Quinn. Francesco gets spooked when he notices a shadowy figure on his yacht, then calms down only slightly when he recognizes his estranged younger brother, Felipe. Felipe, who is a brilliant and accomplished Yale graduate, gave up a life of crime a few years back to pursue a career as a successful stockbroker in New York. Vice suspects his return to Miami will disrupt the balance of power within the Cruz family. Castillo assigns Gina the task of shadowing Felipe to see what he's up to, and Gina is totally up to the task because Felipe is foxy. Felipe is played by 80s heartthrob Isai Morales, who we last saw back in season one's The Home Invaders, and who is currently doing a spectacular job of playing the supervillain Deathstroke on DC's Titans. Jorge and Maria Cruz, parents to Francesco and Felipe, throw an outdoor party to celebrate Felipe's return. Maria is played by Rosanna de Soto, who also appeared briefly in season two's Bushido, while Jorge is played by Alfonso Arau, director of Like Water for Chocolate and A Walk in the Clouds. Felipe dodges questions about his reasons for returning to Miami, and his presence clearly vexes Francesco. Gina trails Felipe to a church where his his uncle, Father Ernesto, played by Daniel Lugo, has set up a care center for AIDS patients. Gina secretly photographs Felipe talking to a young man at the hospice, and then Tubbs is chased around Francesco's warehouse by a forklift operator in a scene that goes on for a crazy long time. Francesco has been slowly losing the Cruz family's hold on the docks, so Castillo suspects Felipe is back in town to put the family business back on track. Tubbs thinks it's possible Felipe is using Ernesto's hospice as a cover for illegal activities, but Castillo has his doubts because Ernesto has a long-standing reputation as a civil rights activist and general do-gooder. Castillo meets with Father Ernesto, with whom he clearly has a long-standing friendship, and it's one of those rare occasions where we get to see Castillo smile. We even get to see him laugh, which is a Miami Vice first. Ernesto gives Castillo a list of supplies his hospice needs and assures Castillo that he has no idea why Felipe is back in Miami. While Nine Million Rainy Days by Jesus and Mary Chain plays, Ernesto returns to his home and is shot and killed by an unidentified gunman. The NYPD is able to identify the young man talking to Felipe in Gina's photograph. He's Luis Garcia, the son of a New York crime family and a childhood friend of Felipe's. I suspects Felipe is trying to expand the Cruz family empire to New York. Ernesto's funeral procession is protested by AIDS picketers because parts of the 80s were really awful. Afterward, Gina approaches Felipe, who tells her of his intention to continue running Ernesto's hospice. However, Gina and Felipe learn that the church is evicting the hospice due to all the controversy caused by the protesters. Gina and Felipe spot and chase down Ricky, a neighborhood kid who was seen hanging around Ernesto's home the night he was murdered. Ricky is played by major crime star and gay activist Jonathan Del Arco. Ricky claims he saw a man wearing a suit enter Ernesto's home the night of the murder. Castillo keeps a Bible in his desk, which is inscribed with a dedication from Ernesto and is filled with news clippings about the civil rights movement and photos of Castillo with Ernesto. Castillo tells Gina of his intention to make sure the hospice stays open. Castillo balls out the head of the Catholic Archdiocese, Father Wajda, who is played by Polish actor Oleg Krupa for cancelling the hospice's lease. He threatens to leak this unflattering news to the press unless the hospice is reopened. Crackett somehow gets into a boat race with Francesco, set to Yin and Yang and the Flower Pot Man by Love and Rockets, which culminates with Francesco falling overboard. At the hospice, Felipe breaks down as Luis Garcia dies of AIDS-related causes, while Modigliani by Book of Love plays. Castillo talks to Felipe, who assures him he has no intention of taking over the family business. He and Luis were lovers in New York, and they came to Miami together so Luis could receive care at the hospice. Felipe outs himself to his family, none of whom take the news especially well. It's revealed that Jorge, the Cruz family patriarch, murdered his brother-in-law Ernesto because he suspects Ernesto somehow made Felipe gay. At the news that her husband murdered her brother, Maria shoots and wounds Jorge and vice bursts in and arrests him. This is a very good, thoughtful episode. From the vantage point of 2019, it seems like Vice could have figured out a whole lot sooner why Felipe was visiting Louis at the hospice, instead of going off on a tangent about how Felipe maybe wanted to use the hospice as a cover for illegal activities. 
But 1987 was a very different time. Considering the era in which this episode was made, in which the networks generally treated AIDS with either apathy or fear, it's a bit remarkable to see Miami Vice addressing the AIDS epidemic head-on and in a thoughtful and compassionate manner. I like almost everything about this episode. I like Castillo's friendship with Father Ernesto and the hints of his involvement in the civil rights movement, and I like the dynamics of the Cruz crime family with Felipe's return throwing everything into chaos. The only misstep, and it's a small one, is the addition of a couple of completely unnecessary action scenes. I'm guessing the boat chase and the utterly ludicrous forklift chase were added to provide a jolt of action to what is otherwise a pretty sensitive and introspective episode. I'm giving it four flamingos. Brace yourself for next week, because we finally have reached the one with James Brown and Chris Rock and alien abductions. It's perhaps the most notorious Miami Vice episode of all time, so I hope you'll join me then. Enjoy your week.